Hi, and welcome to my observatory, which is really nothing more than my garage. But uh, I thought I might do a little video on how I do polar alignment and how I set up the scope prior to recording and broadcasting on Night Skies Network. It's a lot of fun, and uh, it's educational for those that watch, hopefully anyway, as well. More to come. Okay, so here is uh, the scope setup, and uh, I've got the cables running, <clears throat> uh, just a few of them right now, into the garage over in the corners where I have it set up at. So um, I'm going to show you how I get this to uh, polar align with the sky. Okay, so let's uh, familiarize ourselves first with uh, what needs to be done for a polar alignment, which is the first step in um, setting up your mount. So you'll see that you have an axis here that runs through the uh, the head of the equatorial mount, and this is this must line up with uh, a polar uh, alignment um, such as the North Star, um, and that is done by simply unlocking your clutch, rotating your scope to uh, free up a little hole here on this side that you can pop that off, and that has a hole that goes through. We just lock that and then on this side we have we uncover the actual eyepiece and you look up through here and you probably can't see it but you will line yourself up with the North Star which is um, pretty much true north and that what that does is allows you to set the base or the tripod uh, that you're holding your scope and align it with the axis of the earth after that you have your right ascension and decoration um, uh, motions in the equatorial mount that thing can then track the sky diagonally straight across up and down however you um, it, depending on what object you're viewing um, and it keeps uh, time of course with the rotation of the earth um, by the um, onboard uh, computer okay once you've done that you want to line up your marks again and uh, to make sure that the uh, this this axis point here is lined up as well as for the right ascension as well as the declination um, and make sure that those are lined up as well okay the next thing you want to do is at the back of the scope you're looking up at the North Star which you can't see from here but um, you want to uh, line it up in your finder scope and then of course your camera you can do it through your eyepiece and simply throw your your uh, mirror switch back and forth to go from the eyepiece to the camera but I prefer just to do it in the camera to begin with because there is some play here and you're only talking about a very very small field of view so you may see it perfectly in your eyepiece but because these are rather t relatively long and there's a small amount of play I mean just a very very small amount you may just be tilted just a little bit to the right or to the left and um, or up and down and that will not line you up direct correctly for your astrophotography so the best way to do it is to simply use your camera to do your polar alignment and then once you're polar aligned or you get your scope there but you still need to uh, your I'm sorry you have your your um, your base and your axis aligned but you also want to make sure that you're aligned with uh, Polaris before you start doing your uh, six star alignment Okay, I want to show you some of the software that I use. Um, as you can see down here, I have Polaris that's in our field of view uh, from the camera, not the IP. So I can do everything remotely from my computer here in the garage, which I kind of use as a warm room, my observatory, if you will. And I also have the handset, looks just like the handset that's on the Celestron scope. Um, and of course, you can do uh, your aligning and uh, you can uh, do your directional signals here. Uh, which will uh, move your scope around and um, you can do just about well you can do everything that you can do from the hand control uh, remotely which makes it very nice um, and then over here we have the Malin cam control uh, for the camera which has a preset for deep sky planetary moon solar and you can even do a user to find if you'd like um, there are other settings in here as well for some of your uh, sensitivity settings for um, um, oh it's it, it's it's actually a very uh, comprehensive um, camera set up with the software that um, that goes with this it does a lot of things right now honestly that um, that I'm still playing with and 
reading about and trying to get up uh, on it. it does have uh, eight times zoom which is very nice it does have a cooling chip in the uh, camera itself so that keeps it a constant 40 degrees so uh, heat as you know uh, as it rises off of the pavement it kind of makes some waves and you'll get that in your photos especially when you're doing long exposure so um, a cooled uh, chip on a camera uh, for astrophotography is very important um, then of course we have video settings here for your brightness contrast gamma gain hue saturation sharpness and white balance and then all your filters as well which can bring out some of the uh, infrared and the nebula um, and of course you've got video capture or you've got just regular uh, photos uh, as well um, and then moving down finally I do have a, a focuser uh, on here that actually focuses the um, telescope uh, remotely as well and that's a very nice feature so really I can kind of run the entire thing uh, right here from uh, this control desk so more to come okay so now I'm ready to align uh, I have Polaris uh, in my field of view and uh, I am ready to uh, press enter and uh, do a two-star alignment it's an initial lineup uh, after you're on your polar aligned to Polaris, there is some clouds going on right now, so it is right here, but there's, uh, it's partly cloudy tonight, so um, it normally would show up here, but we have a cloud in the way. Uh, so you want to uh, hit enter, and you can start a two-star alignment, and then after the alignment of the two primary stars, which is generally two that are in the west, then it will go with um, uh, four more stars that are in the east, and it will map the sky and then you will be uh, polar aligned as well as aligned and any object then that you go to will show up in your field of view here so it's really come a long way from the days of just pointing and trying to keep up um, with the objects trying to find them and then not only that once you do find them it's difficult because uh, you, they would we're, we're rotating of course so that would make it difficult for you to do any kind of astrophotography once this does align and gets locked on an uh, object then uh, as you can see Polaris showed up again um, then it will also track with the rotation of the earth and keep it dead center uh, in the uh, field of view so we uh, start off by just doing this uh, two star alignment index marks. and so Press what's nice continue. about it is we also have a voice that will tell you so if I'm out by the scope um, I can either wear a headset or I can have it just um, tell me where I'm at and I can remote control actually everything uh, from this wireless game controller which is kinda nice uh, and it, it interacts with this and I can actually use this and and move uh, move this the scope around however I need to so let's uh, continue with our alignment and then we can get on to some observing okay we're ready to uh, begin our uh, two-star alignment now so we'll go ahead and hit enter here and do this one moment Vega. And it's telling me the different stars that I can choose to do my first Earth. alignment. So I want to try to Sweet quickly Lewis. find something in the Sweet. west that I know happens Sand. to be out. Select star. Sabra. Sagal Sut. Sagal Milk. Sagal Bree. A lot of these stars Sagal were Bree. named after the Arabic, so a lot of them have kind of an Arabic name. And for my hot, I want to see if I can... Uh, I want to do it to Deneb. And when I hit this enter now, you're going to hear <clears throat> now the scope is moving and tracking uh, where we want it to go. So we'll pick up here now more. Just a second. Okay, I'm out here at night. I don't know if you can see the laser or not, but I, I use a laser. Uh, you can see I'll put my hand in front of it here that shines up but it's probably not low enough light for you to see it but it, it basically lines itself up with uh, um, the star that I'm trying to align with and it makes it very easy so I don't have to break my neck looking at everything so if we <clears throat> try to see if we can get this uh, actually I've got Deneb lined up if I can get that in here I don't know if I can or not I think I just saw it for a second there Yep, just a flash of it. Anyway, it is lined up in the eyepiece, and I do have my uh, I do have my laser on it, so I'm going to go ahead and accept it. 
as one of my first alignment stars. So now I'm going to the next star. So it's going to ask me to accept that to Altair, which I push the uh, remote control uh, gamepad that I have in my hand, and it will go ahead and automatically move to where I want it. Now you can see that the laser is showing on the roof of my house. So that means that uh, I'm going to have to choose a different star that is higher um, than what I currently have. So I'll go ahead and re repeat the process for about five more stars. And whenever I get done, uh, we'll have it aligned and we'll pick up from there. Okay, my alignment now is successful with my last alignment star. So I'm now going to... Um, pick a object and begin my night of viewing.